The Republic is hungry for expansion, aggressively pushing north from Rome. Standing in its way are the Gallic barbarian tribes of northern Italy. Now 60,000 ferocious warriors must repel the might of two Roman armies to save their homeland and send a violent message back to Rome. Leading the Gauls are a team of aviation journalists comprising two lieutenants. All my boys are fighting. All my boys. Commanded by two generals. We're okay because we're on top of the hill. They must skillfully vanquish the Romans and impress two military experts. You're gonna die. Just attack somebody. Will the Gauls end their days on a lonely hill in Tuscany? Or will barbarian Europe be victorious? This is Time Commanders. Mayor inside the command center are a team of journalists from Pilot Magazine. Nick Bloom, 53, Deputy Editor, Rank General. Dave Calderwood, 50, Editor-in-Chief, Rank General. Trix Triani, 32, Art Editor, Rank Lieutenant. Dave Foster, 25, Advertising Manager, Rank Lieutenant. Now the magazine you all work for I think it's Pilot Magazine. What do you all do on it? Nick, are you in charge? Dave, is it you? I'm editor-in-chief, and uh, Nick is deputy editor. What, what can we read in Pilot Magazine? Do we have to be pilots to, to understand it? Most of our readers are pilots, but quite a few of them are just aviation enthusiasts. Uh, uh, Tricks, well, what's your role on this? I'm art editor. Right. Yes. Do you fly as well? No, I'm actually quite scared of flying. And the more you work on Pilot Magazine, the more determined you are you never to fly. To, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, Nick, um, as well as being an experienced uh, aerobatic pilot, you used to be in a one-man band before you, you split up, I presume. Uh, <laughs> tell me about your George Formby tribute act. Uh, local authorities like to keep the elderly people in their care entertained. <laughs> and if you sing uh, Mr. Wu, and you get to the rhyme about um, ladies' blouses, rhyming with um, something or other, there's always one old lady who shouts knickers. Okay. Nick, I won't be talking to you again, it's all right. <laughs> uh, Dave, you're the advertising manager, and I understand you can sell anything to anyone. Nice compliment, but yeah, I can... Coals to the people of Newcastle? I've tried, yeah. yeah Sand to the people of Saudi Arabia? Work on that one. Well, look, you're all very welcome to uh, the programme, and you probably want to know now which battle you're going to be involved in. Well, yeah, you're fighting a very important battle, the Gauls mm -hmm. against the Romans, the Battle of Telamon. 225 BC. Uh, our experts down here, uh, Eric and Mark, have been putting the uh, finishing touches to it all, chessing it all for historical authenticity. Come up here, gentlemen. Dr. Eric Nussbacher, Senior Lecturer in War Studies, Sandhurst. Mark Urban, military historian and author. You guys are going to be Gauls from northern Italy who are not defending their farms and their homes against the Romans. No, you guys have come down into Roman territory in search of some loot. This army of rampaging Gauls is led by King Anaruestes. You've already given a kicking to a second-rate Roman army, and you're about to come up against the Roman first team. Two legions commanded by Consul Regulus have sailed all the way from Sardinia. Now they're marching south to crush the Gauls at Telemon. It's a great trial for you as Gauls. So be bold, be strong. You burnish your reputation through heroism in battle. Remember, there's a Roman army, but there may be another Roman army somewhere. Consul Emilius Pappus has marched his legions north from Rome. They're in heavy pursuit of the Gauls and may surprise them. You've got to act decisively, do what commanders call defeating in detail. Go for one before you have to deal with the other. But before they can tackle the Romans, the team must learn as much as possible about the battle ahead. First, they get to look at the terrain. The Gallic troops have assembled in open farmland, sheltered by a large hill to the north. This hill dominates the battlefield, 
which is bordered on one side by a river. Consul Regulus and his legions from Sardinia have assembled north of the hill facing the Gauls. But newly arrived on the south side of the battlefield, hidden by trees behind Gallic lines, are the troops of Consul Aemilius, fresh from Rome. Unaware of this threat, the Gauls stand just in front of a luxurious Roman villa. What's this structure? Could be a chemical weapons factory. <laughs> <laughs> the river's going to form one edge of the battlefield, isn't it? Yes. So the hill appears to be the crucial meeting point. The key terrain on this battlefield is that rise in the center. There's a hill that dominates that piece of ground, but the team must not make a fetish of that hill. It's a big feature. It's in the middle of the map. It's important, but it's not the only thing on that battlefield. But often riding down a steep slope is more difficult on a horse than riding up one. It doesn't always give a tactical advantage to be on top of the hill. Nick the pilot's navigational skills leave a little to be desired. I can't relate any of this to what I'm oh, seeing on the map. Right Fortunately, the rest of the team have a better understanding of geography. We've got our bearings at last. Yes. <laughs> Do you ever get lost when you're flying? Yes, all the time. I have no sense of direction. After a shaky start, Nick and his team must now get to grips with the troops they'll command in battle. The team's army comprises 60,000 Gallic tribesmen, drawn from across northern Italy and southern France. Trix and Dave now command fearsome warriors, deadly mercenary Gaisati, and skilled cavalry troops. But there are other things on General Nick's mind. Can we do That's anything it. with this picture? Like what? Like give it more definition? Yeah. By zooming out? Look. You can't. <laughs> they may take this kind of demand in the old folks home when you're doing the George Formby stuff, but I'm afraid you have to work with the tools you're given. Okay. Our lieutenants seem to be completely absorbed in being briefed at the moment. I'm no military expert, and you shouldn't take military advice from a man in a pink shirt, but seriously, if at this early stage, when you're getting your intelligence gathered, you've lost control of your lieutenants, you're screwed. All still infantry, isn't it? More infantry, more infantry. Yeah. All right, some cavalry here. So it covers this one. Yeah. In previous encounters, the Gallic cavalry have proved themselves against the Romans. The Gaulish cavalry are good. They've got quite a few of them, and they're very skilled horsemen. They've got a type of saddle that was copied by the Romans because it allowed for more aggressive military riding. Now, they need to use them to neutralize Roman cavalry and to threaten the Roman flanks. That's the best way to use those forces. If it comes to a frontal fight with the infantry, they've got to hope to intimidate them with these big, naked warriors, the Gaisati. The Gaisati are the ones with the white hair, the lime one. These are wild hillmen, big barbarian guys, and they go into battle butt naked, and all they've got on is a big golden torque around their necks and maybe some big armlets on their upper arms. They're going out there, they're saying, hey, look at me. Look at my big barbarian penis. I'm here to kill you. We put some trousers on them so as not to create the shock effect on people at home. But they were going for this shock effect on the Romans. Look at my genitals. I am a barbarian. I'm here to kill you. This is meant to intimidate the Romans. The fearsome Gaisati are controlled by tricks, leaving Dave Foster in charge of the rest of the Gallic infantry. Okay, so give us a rundown on the infantry down here. You've got um, some skirmishes. You're basically guys with spears. Then you've got three units of Gaulic swordsmen, and that's sort of like the, the Lennox Lewis of the team. <laughs> Quite hard. Another interesting thing about the, the Gauls here is they've got this um, tradition of heroic declaiming before they go into battle. They stand there, they say, I'm the greatest warrior ever, and often then they come forward to challenge their opponents to individual combat. And that was sometimes a threat to the cohesion of their enemy. It might go disturb me other troops when I'm trying to draw them out as well, I guess, with that sort I'm getting a sense you, you, your plan is beginning to come together, but there's obviously one vital piece of information you need. You need to find out about your enemy. That's right. Now the team have got to know their own troops, it's time for Dave to check out their opposition. He sends his scouts deep into enemy territory to spy on Regulus's army from Sardinia. But this is Dave's only chance to uncover both Roman armies. 
not just the one he can see on the open plain, but also